Hi, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. In today's video, I want to cover why secretory IgA testing is important, what it means if you have low secretory IgA, what it means if you have high secretory IgA, how you want to tackle it when it's out of balance, and finally, I want to share with you some of the things you can do naturally to support your immune system. So what is secretory IgA? Well, the immune system makes T cells and it makes B cells, and B cells produce secretory IgA, which act as a first line of defense against the entry of foreign substances into your body. These foreign substances could be undigested proteins from the foods you eat that don't get properly uh, digested. It could be coming from bacteria, it could be coming from viruses, it could be coming from molds, it could be coming from an inflammatory response, and it could be coming from various food sensitivities. If you think about the body's mucosal surfaces, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the throat, the sinuses, the skin, uh, the urinary tract, the GI tract, these essentially are all entry points for various disease-causing pathogens. Your body's way of protecting these entry points is done with the release of secretory IgA. You know, think of it as the first line of defense. If you didn't have this line of defense, we would be chronically sick. And so that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. So let's say perhaps you've had some testing done and you had your secretory IgA levels tested and your levels were low. What exactly does that mean? Well, low or reduced secretory IgA levels are by and large commonly seen in individuals with low immune system function. Things like adrenal fatigue or adrenal exhaustion, individuals with chronic gut problems, people with IBS, people with candida, people with Crohn's disease, or people that have been exposed to, pro uh, or people that have prolonged exposure to toxins, um, ulcerative colitis and autism. These are all typical examples of, of people that would suffer with low secretory IgA. I personally interpret low secretory IgE levels to be a sign of chronic stress. This is where the body has, has really been drained. The immune system has been depleted. Secretory IgA, unfortunately, doesn't tell us specifically what's causing it. Okay? This is why you'll need to work with a functional medicine practitioner who can begin to investigate the causes behind the low secretory IgA. In order to improve the secretory IgA, it's critical that you flush out the mechanism that's causing these low levels. What about high secretory Ig levels or elevated secretory Ig levels? What does that mean? Well, when I see high levels of secretory IgA, I actually start thinking now that we're dealing with more of an activated immune system response. You know, some sort of infection has been flared up. There's some sort of acute inflammatory response that we're dealing with. And here again, we don't know the cause, but that's what we need to figure out. That's what we need to investigate. So the point being here is that this is not where our investigation stops. This is actually where the investigation begins. And I see too many practitioners, day in, day out, patients that basically send in their, their testing, and it's almost like the ball was dropped at that point. Either the practitioner didn't know what else to do, or the practitioner didn't know that they needed to look into other areas. So again, um, if this is happening, you're going to have to take it a step further to find out what the cause of that is. Um, infections could be coming from toxins made by gram-negative bacteria. Today, we're hearing so much about how um, uh, conditions like a leaky gut, something called intestinal hyperpermeability, and how the cause of that leaky gut is actually caused by LPS toxins. These are gram-negative bacteria that can erode and break down and, and cause this leaky gut. Um, so again, these toxins are the entry point into the body's circulatory system. Uh, elevated levels of secretory IgA could also be uh, in indicative of a flare-up of something uh, like a viral infection that's flared up, whether it be Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus or CMV. Uh, these, again, are, are infections, are viral infections that, again, could stir up this uh, secretory IgA response. Um, there could be inflammatory bowel disorders or some sort of inflammatory response in your body that needs to be uh, uncovered. So what do you do if you have this finding show up in your stool testing or your saliva testing? Well, the first step to balance secretory IgA, IgA levels naturally is to use an anti-inflammatory diet. Obviously, here's where food sensitivity testing and food allergens uh, you know, testing can be extremely helpful. Obviously, you want to eliminate these foods. Okay, I personally run a food sensitivity panel on these patients so that we're not guessing about what foods are offenders and what foods aren't offenders. We know right out of the starting gate what foods we need to eliminate. Uh, but for whatever reason, if you can't test that, whatever that reason may be, then you're going to want to eliminate things like grains. You're going to want to eliminate wheat, rye, oats, barley, corn. You want to obviously eliminate dairy and butter and yogurt. You want to eliminate eggs and nuts. You want to eliminate uh, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, sodas, shrimp, nuts, all of these more common allergens okay, and, and common food sensitivities. There's a link at the end of this video that you'll, uh, if you watch and you connect to that link or hit on that link, it'll take you to a page where you can download a free guide 
that uh, if you don't undergo uh, food sensitivity testing, that guide can help uh, you know, kind of steer you in the direction of foods you want to avoid. Bone broth can be extremely effective at helping the gut because of the impact it can have on glutathione levels, um, as well as because of all the great amino acids uh, in that bone broth that can help seal up your gut and again, boosting up those secretory IgA levels. It's important to provide the gut and the immune system with key nutrients. I find that nutrients like vitamin C and uh, selenium and glutamine and zinc are extremely helpful. Um, zinc levels can be checked by doing a zinc challenge test. This is very, very simple to do. Uh, but other nutrients to consider include things like choline and glycine, glutathione, um, and of course essential fatty acids, among many other things. I work with many patients who are struggling with chronic autoimmune issues. So with many of these patients, I believe supporting glutathione levels and glutathione recycling is extremely important, okay? Um, Non-denatured whey protein from grass-fed cows, again, will help boost glutamine and glutathione levels. And of course, these are very easily absorbed within the body. Some people, unfortunately, can't tolerate whey protein. So in these cases, um, you know, you might want to consider looking into things like sprouted hemp and pea protein, all right? But the point here is always think about the cause. And again, this is going to vary from person to person to person. I often think of gut problems, adrenal problems, food sensitivities, parasites, daily stressors in a patient's life, nutritional deficiencies, sleep and wake cycles, um, as all the potential causes, okay? And that's why it's so important that it's, again, I would reiterate this, Work with a doctor who understands the big picture, a doctor preferably whose focus is solely on functional medicine. There are a few things that, um, well, obviously can boost secretory IgA levels naturally, okay? Colostrum, which we talked about earlier. This is an immunoglobulin that's secreted from uh, mom's breast milk in the early stages of breastfeeding. Um, what else is there? Well, let's see. Colostrum is, is, let's go back to colostrum for a second. Colostrum is loaded with antibodies that stimulate those secretory IgA levels. Fermented dairy can be very good. Uh, make sure that it's from 100% grass-fed cows that are loaded with acidophilus and, and bacillus and um, saccharomyces uh, boulardii species. These are probiotics that can also help stimulate secretory IgA levels. Things like beta-glucans, which come from mushrooms, they also have the ability uh, to stimulate the immune system. So you see here, there are so many things naturally that can be done to support your immune system that you don't always have to think about resorting to taking medications. The thing that I would caution you about, however, is just be careful that if you have sensitivities, let's say you have sensitivities to nightshades, or if you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or you have a leaky gut, uh, maybe perhaps you need to follow a FODMAP diet. Maybe you need to avoid probiotics or prebiotics in the case of a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Some people don't do well on fermented foods like, his, like um, uh, kombucha or bone broth. So again, these foods might contain higher levels of histamines. But again, if you visit my site, I, I have put together a free download of foods that are high in histamines, if, if that is the case, um, with your particular health condition. So the question becomes, well, how can I naturally lower secretory IgA? Well, again, elevated levels of secretory IgA is a sign of inflammation or infection or an irritant, and the immune system is running on high. So again, to lower that, again, from a dietary standpoint, you're still going to want to follow an anti-inflammatory diet that again, in most cases are going to include bone broth, elimination of immune system antagonizing foods, a low histamine diet, um, perhaps a FODMAP diet, again, depending on the individual, or an autoimmune paleo diet. Again, I can't stress the point. Uh, this is obviously where testing is so important because from person to person to person, there really is no cookie cutter approach. And although it's nice to say, do this if you have this, every person is different, okay? Um, some people are going to need what's called a 4R protocol, which stands for remove, replace, re-inoculate, and repair. And if you just Google Dr. Hagmeyer and 4R protocol, you can learn more about some of the, the basic steps that you can take in order to eliminate possible pathogens or infections that might be in your gut. This could be, a, again, another source of elevated levels of secretory IgA. So in wrapping this video up, a couple closing points that I want to share with you. Number one is secretory IgA is a marker indicating uh, that it is a first line of defense or mucosal integrity has been breached. Number two, it's not specific to any particular cause. Um, it basically indicates that your immune system has been flared up or it's suppressed and that obviously one of the things that you're going to need to do is support your immune system. Number three, 
is you want to eliminate food sensitivities. You want to eliminate the cause of inflammation or the infection. Uh, that'll all help normalize your secretory IgA levels. And then finally, secretory IgA testing, along with more comprehensive testing, should be done to rule in or out some of the potential offenders. So there you have it. Uh, I hope you have a better understanding of what secretory IgA tells you, what it doesn't tell you, but hopefully it gives you a better appreciation for all the things that you need to take into consideration if your immune system is off. There's no simple cookie cutter approach here. And this is again why I can't stress enough that if there are problems, don't try to fix this on your own. Too many people will come to my office after struggling for, for you know six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years, trying to fix themselves only to have lost a lot of time. So find yourself a practitioner who understands um, a, more about these secretory IgA levels, how to test for it, and give that practitioner time to help figure you out so that you can get better, okay? Till next time, take care.